Hey, it's Jake with Churchfront. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the setup we are currently using for online church at Mission Lakewood. We are a two-year-old church plant that usually meets in a high school auditorium, but that high school is closed, just like a lot of the other public spaces uh, around our city, around our country, and around the globe. The building I'm in right now is just an office space that I rent out for Churchfront, and this is where we film our online courses. So when I found out a day ago that we were not gonna meet in person at the high school and we needed to create some sort of online worship experience for our church, I figured this would probably be the best space for us to do that. I'm gonna cover a lot of gear and software that we're using for this online church setup. So I'm gonna link my worship ministry toolkit down below. It's a spreadsheet containing all the links to all the gear and software that we use. And I'm also gonna link the Mission Lakewood Church YouTube channel so you guys can subscribe to that channel to keep up with the latest in our online church endeavors. So let's go ahead and begin our walkthrough of this studio. So a couple things about the room itself, uh, it is just just a plain Jane office space. Uh, and this office space that I am in is not the fanciest office space in the world, but it's cheap and it's like less than a mile from my house. So it's very convenient. The room itself is maybe 12 feet wide by maybe 20 feet long. So it's not very big. I got some blackout cloth from Amazon to cover the big windows that are here. So we have no natural light in here. Uh, I also had a random window that goes to the hallway in this office space. So we put blackout cloth there as well. And then I got some sound absorption panels from Amazon that I lined around, especially that corner of the room, just to just help absorb the sound for whoever's uh, here speaking or singing. It's gonna just help dampen that sound and the room won't be too live. And the carpet of this room is like a 50 year old, ugly brown carpet. Fortunately, it doesn't make it into the videos. Now let's talk about the lighting setup in this room. I have a key light right here, just a LED lighting panel that I found on Amazon. I think it might be the newer brand. And then I have a similar uh, LED. It might actually be the same exact one on the other side, although it actually looks a little bit smaller. So I've got a key and a fill light and then I've got a hair light. Uh, the key and the fill light, they have a cooler color temperature, kind of like the daylight temperature. And then my hair light up here is a bit warmer, so you could kind of see a little bit more, kind of that golden look around the back of my head, kind of creates some nice uh, separation between me and the background. And then on the back wall behind me is just one of those Philips Hue lights that really just is good for casting light up against the wall. And that also helps create some nice background uh, separation from wh whoever your subject is. And then those lights can also change colors if we want. This flat screen TV is an Insignia TV. I think it maybe cost me three or $400. It's incredibly inexpensive for the size of TV that you get. And this is great for putting up presentations. And then I found this TV stand on Amazon. And there's no special coding or anything on the TV. Uh, we just film it as is and it works great. I have another smaller flat screen TV that is on another TV stand that is right next to the camera right there. And that's where we're putting our stage display. Now let's talk about our sound infrastructure. So the primary mixing console I'm using is the PreSonus 32SC. All of our microphones are going into that console and that console is also plugged into the Adams audio speakers that I have. For microphones, I have a Sennheiser shotgun mic above me. This is great for people who are teaching or just talking. And then for vocal mics, we're using a Shure SM7B and then a Shure SM58. We are using Ableton Live to run our keyboard sounds as well as backing tracks. And then it's also sending automation cues to ProPresenter for lyrics. The laptop running Ableton Live is plugged into the Behringer X-Air 18. It's a very portable mixing console, digital mixing console, but in this case, we're using it primarily as a large audio interface to send six outputs of audio from our Ableton computer into our mixing console. The six outputs from Ableton Live include keys left, keys right, the click and guide, the bass heavy backing tracks, and then we have stereo, all the other tracks uh, left and right. So that makes up a total of six outputs that we can control independently in our mixing console. And you'll see in a second also in our digital audio workstation, Pro Tools. Unfortunately, all of our gear for our church is at the high school. I'll be able to go get it in a couple days from now, but we didn't have time to get the gear out of the high school to utilize in this setup. I wish I could have used my Midas M32 mixing console and then I could have just run Don 
Dante uh, for all of my audio networking. But in this case, I kind of was able to just be creative, go from my MacBook Pro running Ableton into the X Air 18 and then send analog outputs into the PreSonus mixing console. Next to the PreSonus mixing console, I have a laptop that is just running ProPresenter. So ProPresenter is what's presenting the backgrounds on this screen. Then you'll also see the lower thirds lyrics on our final broadcast video. And then ProPresenter is also sending a stage display signal here so that as I sing and our other vocalists sing or our pastors preach, we can have the confidence monitor for any lyrics or any other notes. And now let's talk about video. That's obviously an important part of a live stream setup. The camera that we are using is the Panasonic GH5. It is a great workhorse mirrorless micro four thirds camera. It shoots all the way up to 4K. In this case though, we're really just broadcasting in 1080p. So that camera is what I'm actually talking to you right now, it's standing on a Manfrotto tripod, and that's it. It's just one camera, very, very simple. And then to get that video feed from this camera to the computer running Wirecast, we have an HDMI cable coming out of the camera and going into the Black Magic uh, Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. Coming out of the other side of that recorder is a Thunderbolt cable, so I had to get a Thunderbolt to USB-C dongle, and then that goes into the computer, and then Wirecast can detect this camera as a video source. Wirecast is a really great piece of software as you get going with live streaming for your church because basically the way it works is the software pulls in all your video, your audio feeds, and then it can just combine them together and you can create these different layers. You can choose you know, what video angles you want. Um, you can also choose if you want to overlay your uh, text. You can, you can bring in your beautifully mixed audio from Pro Tools like what we're doing. Wirecast is just very, very powerful. So you know, in the video live streaming world, you can have a separate like switcher, like maybe you're running an ATEM switcher, but software like Wirecast um, kind of does the switching inside of it. Keep in mind, you're gonna wanna make sure you have a more powerful computer running it so it's gonna be stable and it's not gonna lag on you. So there are three laptops total in this setup. One is the Ableton one, which I already talked about. The second one is the ProPresenter one, which I also talked about. The third one is over here and it is running two applications, Pro Tools, which is our digital audio workstation, and then Wirecast, which is our video capture and streaming software. And to clarify, this Sunday we're not actually streaming live to our social platforms, we're just capturing all this in studio, we're gonna edit, put it together, and then we're just gonna publish it at our regular service time on Sunday. But with Wirecast, we could stream if we wanted to, and chances are we may start doing that very soon in the coming weeks. So talking about that computer that has Pro Tools and Wirecast running on it, why do we have Pro Tools? Pro Tools is actually running our broadcast template. Uh, I have the broadcast template that I got from Luke Hendrickson and uh, from Bethel Music, and this is like the most awesome thing. I have an in-depth video uh, coming out uh, about it soon, so you guys will be able to understand more why this is such a cool template. But we're using that template to mix all of our audio uh, for our online worship gatherings. So here's how the signal flow works. It starts at our vocal mics and our instruments, and it goes into eventually the PreSonus 32SC mixing console. From that mixing console, it's then sent over USB into the other computer that's running Pro Tools, and that's how we're getting the, the multi-track recording into that Pro Tools template. The Pro Tools template then has a stream output track, which then I'm sending over two channels of USB audio back into the PreSonus 32SC. That way I can actually monitor our Pro Tools mix with the PreSonus mixing console. And then what I do is I actually send those two channels that have the, the main left and right output from Pro Tools going into the PreSonus, I actually send those main left and right outputs from that broadcast mix back to the computer running Pro Tools and Wirecast, but this time I just go to Wirecast and I input that main mix from Pro Tools but actually from the PreSonus mixing console into Wirecast. So I know that really sounded confusing. Let me just go over that one more time briefly. All the vocal mics and instruments go into the PreSonus board and then then into Pro Tools over USB to get mixed. That main mix goes back to the PreSonus board so we can monitor that mix. Um, and then it gets sent back to the computer over USB again, uh, running Wirecast. So then it can, uh, Wirecast can actually marry the mixed broadcast audio with this camera feed. It's pretty mind boggling how amazing this sounds and how seamless this workflow is once you get it all set up. 
So after we recorded my wife and I playing through our worship set, we actually had a video file that was ready to go. I had the lyrics embedded uh, in the lower thirds on the video, and then the audio was also mixed into that video, and it sounded awesome. But I still mixed the audio again in post because we didn't have someone actively mixing that Pro Tools template while we were recording. You're gonna wanna have someone mixing that to adjust for like who's leading which song so they can adjust the faders accordingly. But in this setup, what I did is I still had a multi-track recording when we were done, so I was able to play it back again, create a new master burn recording in that Pro Tools template, and then just bounce that out, and then sync it with the video file that we created. And that is the final product you are going to see in here when you watch the video for yourself. One last cool thing about this setup is how we're using ProPresenter to send the lower thirds lyrics to the Wirecast video capture and or stream when it becomes a stream. So ProPresenter 7 makes it really easy. If you put both computers, the one running ProPresenter and the one running Wirecast on a local area network over ethernet, which I do for these computers, um, they can actually talk to each other uh, via NDI. You can send a video feed from ProPresenter to really any other device that's on the NDI network. So in this case, I created a new screen and I formatted the look so that it's lower thirds and I also also enabled alpha key in ProPresenter. And then when you have the two computers on the same network, the NDI just works so long as your applications can, can see and work with NDI. So once that screen was enabled on ProPresenter, I was able to just go into Wirecast and then add a video source and select the, the screen that I created in ProPresenter and voila, you have lower third lyrics on the video. And that's our setup. Hopefully you guys have a great idea now if you're trying to create an online church experience as well. Um, here's, here's a way to do it. And I was really happy with the end result. You'll notice our pastor is preaching and talking from the top of a mountain. That's because this week he was actually stranded when he went on a snowshoeing trip uh, to have like a cool spiritual retreat. He actually get, got stranded in the snow and then he had to figure out all the logistics like trying to communicate with us about what we we're gonna do this Sunday. He ended up recording his little sermon on the top of some mountain here in Colorado, and he sent it to me this afternoon. I was able to combine it with what we recorded here in the studio, and you'll see the final product. I'll make sure to link that below in the description. But I think this whole online church thing is a lot of fun. I'm kind of looking forward to not waking up at 4.30 a.m. tomorrow morning to go to church uh, for real, but I hope this doesn't last long. Meeting in person is always 100 times better. So I'm just really excited for things to get back to normal, but this is a great way to have to really learn a lot about live streaming very quickly. If you and your church needs help building infrastructure like this so you can host worship services online, be sure to check out worshipleaderschool.com where my team can come alongside you and provide you with the training and coaching to make that happen. And as I mentioned at the top of the video, you can also download the worship ministry toolkit to get links to all the gear that I cover in this video, which is gonna help you kind of figure out what you have budget for and what type of setup or approach you might take. Thanks so much for watching this video. Smash that like button if you found this video helpful and share it with your friends in worship ministry. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos that we have to help you grow yourself and grow your church.